Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in law enforcement? Here on Behind the Star, we share stories about the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Central Florida's largest law enforcement agency. From forensics to dispatch to the deputies on patrol, we'll talk to the brave men and women who protect our community. This is Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I am your host, John Bustecker, the official storyteller of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody who has subscribed and listened to our previous episodes. We're off to a really great start. This is sort of a new thing that we're doing at the Sheriff's Office. So all of our uh, fans out there, uh, thank you so much. But uh, this week, we are out at the Orange County Sheriff's Office Mounted Unit. If you didn't know, we, we have a mounted unit. Uh, you may have seen them downtown or, or all over the, the county. They're on horses. And I'm here with Master Deputy Lindsey Whitesell and Deputy First Class Andrew Stevens. And uh, we're chatting about horses today. But thank you guys so much for uh, joining me. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my wife actually rides horses, so I, I'm around them uh, every now and then. But uh, it's nice to sort of be out here at the paddock instead of in my office <laughs> like I usually am. So Definitely. first of all, uh, can you guys explain to me why do we have a mounted unit? We've got a mounted unit mainly for the bread and butter of our unit is crowd control. Um, we've done, we do a ton of different other aspects of uh law enforcement but for the main reason is crowd control so when you say crowd control is that where is that is that what parts of the county do we need crowd control a lot of times we'll use uh, the horses for crowd control when we have big events downtown will help the Orlando Police Department uh, we have used the horses at the University of Central Florida for their football games to assist their police and other agencies in getting everybody into the stadium safely as well as when they're leaving and to kind of uh, We'll say uh, discourage people from starting more problems than need to be. So I got a little tour before I started here. I think you there's about uh, 10 or 11 horses out here. Is that right? Right now we have 12. 12. Okay. All right. So 12 horses. So so how does it work? I mean, d does somebody call you out? Or, or I mean, when you say you're at UCF or downtown, do they request that we have the mounted patrol come out and, and help out? Yes, we are actually... Uh, Highly sought after for a lot of big events. We just worked uh, the Trump uh, rally, I'll call it, a couple weekends ago at downtown. So there was a lot of crowds there, a lot of peaceful people, a lot of really nice people that we met. Uh, we didn't really need to use the horses for any crowd events, but they were there for presence, and we did patrol the area. So so why, why does it sort of help with crowds? Is it because you're higher up, you're on a horse, people see that? Maybe just talk about that a little bit. You hit it right on the head. Um, our biggest advantage is height. So I'm assigned to a horse called Pete, and Pete's 17 hands. You measure a horse by your hands, starting from the ground, going up to the withers, or just in front of their back. When I'm on him, I'm probably about 10 to 12 feet in the air. So I can see over everybody's heads. I can see who's the instigator in the crowd, who's the problem uh, causers, and uh, let everybody else know what's kind of going on. So, so people in the crowd, I mean, how do they usually respond to seeing horses sort of out and about uh, in, in big crowds like this? People in the public generally really love the horses. We are usually the highest sought after f like photographed unit. People will chase after us down the streets to talk to us. They want to pet the horses. They want to interact with us. We have a very different kind of unit than being on patrol. People are running after us versus we're running after them. It's a different kind of law enforcement for sure. Uh, the people in the crowds generally really like to see us and they really like to know that the horses are there because they I think they do feel safer knowing that if there was a problem, we can dispel it quickly yeah and i should mention we're out here kind of near disney it's uh the grand cypress uh resort i guess there's some stables out here and if you've never been out here and I, I imagine most people haven't been out to see this place it's a huge facility i mean like we like you said there's at least 12 horses here there's uh there's a whole barn here there's we're in a tack room right now hanging out doing this podcast i know in the future i, I believe we're going to move stables here pretty soon but right now we're out here it, like i said it's a beautiful facility um, but I want to ask both of you, how did you get into this? I'll, I'll start with Lindsay here. How did you end up in, in the mounted unit? 
I have been riding horses my entire life, and I came to the Orange County Sheriff's Office not even knowing that we had a mounted patrol unit. In the academy, I had an instructor that was currently assigned full-time to the mounted unit, so I started to learn about what the functions were of the unit. I did my mandatory time on patrol. I then was able to cross-train or job shadow out here, so I did two years of job shadowing and cross-training while I was assigned to patrol. Then when there was a spot open, I was able to interview for the spot, and I was able to get the spot. So now I've been here for over eight years. How about you, Andrew? How did you end up here at the mounted unit? So like Lindsay, I uh, had background in riding. I actually rode here at Grand Cypress when it was a working equestrian center at around age 8 to 10. Okay, and, and we should mention, before the Orange County Sheriff's Office took over the stables here, it was a riding center for people that would maybe visit or have their horses here, and so it was a working stable and barn for a long time. I, I uh, the, the sergeant out here explained that this we sort of took it over about 10 years ago or so. Correct. So anyway, continue. Correct, yeah. The bar, the Actually, the facility was built in late 80s, early 90s. I'm sorry, early 80s. Um, was a working equestrian center for a number of years until the economy tanked, and you know, sad to sad to see it go. But it was great for us because we needed yeah. a home. We, the sheriff's office needed a home at the time. If you've ever so. been around horses, you'll know that they are not cheap animals. Exactly, <laughs> they like to no, eat a lot. <laughs> but yeah, but um, had had prior experience in horseback riding. Came to the sheriff's office. Um, was working sector one for a number of years. And. and Tell everybody where Sector 1 is. Sector 1 is Apopka, Pine Hills area. Okay. All right. Sort of north, uh, northwest part north, of Orange Northwest County. Orange County. Exactly. Yeah. Northwest Orange County. Um, so did that for four or five years on the road on Midnight's. Midnight Squad the whole time through for about five years straight almost. Wow. So, um, not yes, on a horse, we should mention. Not on a horse. <laughs> nope. On, on the road. On the road answering calls. Um, had a great, great squad, great supervisors. Um, but just wanted to, in my career, see what else was out there. Um, I knew when the spot opened up in the mounted unit, there were only five of us here. Oh, okay. So not many people and get to do this. Not many people at all. And that five includes a corporal and a sergeant. So there are only three deputies in the, in the mounted unit. Oh, wow. So much like K-9 and some of the other specialty units under specialized patrol, it is very sought after. And very competitive. So both of you, like you said, you grew up riding horses, and, and so you sort of knew your way around the barn and around horses. But I imagine you don't just sort of sign up to be a, a mounted unit. I, I assume there's some sort of training or test that you have to do. Can you talk about that a little bit? Exactly. We have a 150-hour minimum riding I'll call it the program for cross training and job shadowing. You have to complete the minimum of 150 hours. You have to go on patrol with us. There are certain um, phases that you have to pass to take the different exams throughout our riding program. At the end, phase four, after you complete all of that, then you are certified mounted patrol deputy. So you can also participate with us in every event that we do as a full-time unit so if we need extra people that's why we have extra horses we have five full-time people but we have several other deputies and supervisors in the unit that are certified mounted patrol so that they can assist us with events and large grouping things like crowd control like with the trump rally we did we pulled in four or five people from okay. the road so they're not full-time they're guys not are full yes time. okay so they have to meet our minimum standard they have to keep qualifying to come out here and ride with us to make sure that they're still up to speed on what we're doing and that they're still able to do this job as long as they are they can come out and do events with us um in the holiday season we do a lot of parades a lot of public events a lot of places that we go with the sheriff and all of these events that we do so a lot of times we do need extra people that's why we have extra horses too so so and like the testing and training what do you have to do so the testing and training like, like she said it's 150 hours it starts off as basic safety on the ground around an animal this is a 1200 pound horse that if you if <laughs> he or she steps on you, yeah. it's going to hurt. Oh, yeah. You're going to know. Oh, it. yeah. <laughs> so at first, it's ground safety. And then from there, it's we'll put you up on a horse, work on your balance, work on your foundation, and then slowly introduce you to stirrups, reins, how you control the horse, how you control the horse with your hands, how you control the horse with your legs. Because, like she was saying, there's a lot of different programs we do. Crowd control is not just 
one thing we do. We do community outreach programs. So part of the training too is you got to be able to go out there and we do a community outreach program um, called First and Second Touch. Okay. And it's with elementary schools in Orange County that a nonprofit works with us that they give these elementary schools books. We go out there, talk about reading, the importance of reading, importance of staying in school and, huh. and getting your getting your degree type thing to elementary kids. That's neat. Um, and then they come out to our barn and we do a workstation with them, six different stations. And you got to be able to talk to, you know, 20, 30 kids at a time at a time yeah. <laughs> for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and rotate throughout the whole program because you have six or eight different stations and I'm sure, I'm hundreds sure, of kids I'm sure part of it is they get to touch a horse right. and see a horse Ex- and i'm sure right. a lot of them have probably never done that in their life exactly so part of the training too is not just writing but can you be a good spokesperson for the sheriffs and a good image for the sheriff's office because you are representing the sheriff's office in not only community programs because we are tied to the sheriff himself mm-hmm. with many of the events that he goes to yes the barbecues the oh yeah I was, i've been at the so, barbecues i was at a fun run you guys were out there i mean it wasn't for crowd control i mean there's 200 people there. No, yeah and we they do. were all pretty good i mean they were all great so like you're there to like show off sort of what we have so anybody in the sheriff's anybody in the amount of patrol unit too you have to be a very outgoing person and very community oriented okay so that's part of that's part of the training too is putting somebody who may not be in their element there, but introducing them to that as well. So not just on a horse, but on the ground, being able to talk to people and is there do special things. training though to like uh, for crowd control and how to handle a horse? Because I'm sure it's different than riding it a certain way, like an English way or a Western way. Or I mean, you're 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 there to protect people too. In a way, there is your fundamentals are always the same as far as riding. Um, but Lindsay and I, and she can probably add to this. We've done many different schools in regards to crowd control and mainly all the schools the basics the fundamentals are all the same those don't change Mm -hmm. there are many different ways to go about doing it once you're in the crowd but the fundamentals of riding are all the same a lot of people didn't know this but i'll let you talk about it on arresting from horseback oh tell me about that yeah that's (laughs) i didn't even think about that we are capable of doing it a lot of people don't think that we arrest anyone from horseback. They don't think that we can write tickets from the horses. Basically, we use the horses for everything that a deputy will use their patrol car for, and we are capable of doing all of it. The uh, arrest techniques and procedures we practice, and we do a lot of times we will use the deputies that have the patrol cars, the patrol deputies in the area. If we are on patrol and we are going to make an arrest, we usually are in at least groups of twos or more because a lot of people aren't familiar with or handling horses. So we like to have a partner with us, uh, a mounted partner as well, because they know, uh, and they know our horse. They know how to hold our horse. If there's a situation that gets out of hand or we need to get off our horse, which we try not to do. If we don't have a patrol officer or deputy in the, in the area, we will get off the horse, but we do arrest from horseback. So wait, wait, wait. I, so now I need, now I'm very fascinated because I didn't even think about that. So let's say, I'm at a, a UCF football game. Maybe I've had a few too many uh, Bud Lights before the game, and I get a little out of hand. You would not be the first person. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I imagine. Uh, so, so let's say I get a little out of hand, and I need to be arrested. How do you do that from a horse? We do this in our team. We use the horses as the advantage. We use their height, their weight, and the fact that they are intimidating for people. We don't even have to use their actual weight against the person. It would just be the actual thought of the horse coming closer to you that will make you comply with us. Okay. So we use the horses to kind of corral put, them. Put the, <laughs> yes, put the arrestee between us and corral them. It's exactly what you're saying is what we're using, but we use the horse as the advantage and then we have all of our tools on our tool belt just like every other deputy does on patrol and we do what we have to do, but horses are a major component on using them as the pressing factor to get the person to comply. But you, sometimes, go ahead. Just add, I'll just add to that real quick. Sometimes out at UCF too is there's a lot of ground, there's a lot of ground support there. So for us, our biggest thing in a crowd control, maybe you got a lot of students out there that have that liquid courage going through their blood. <laughs> That's nice. That's that students, <laughs> graduates too, alumni graduates, as well. Alumni, alum, alumni as fans. well, yes. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of people want to 
get involved and see what's going on when they hear the loud uh, loud commotion. So you get a lot of people rushing towards it. Overly involved. Overly involved, <laughs> exactly. That uh, our biggest aspect too is that we can we can go in there, separate it out, focus in on who's involved, let the ground troops deal with them, and keep everybody else away. Wow. Huh. But so you have to get off the horse to like put handcuffs on them, right? No, no not always. Not really? really? No. Wow. There's no. much like defensive tactics, like every deputy goes through with the sheriff's office. We go through a course. Part of the training, again, as well, is defensive tactics from horseback. So how you can defend yourself and secure somebody from horseback using the leverage, the height of the horse, um, obtaining an arm or something like that yeah. from the suspect and holding them, securing them, wow. different, different transport to, I, techniques. I want to see that one day. Maybe I'll come out when you're at a big crowd and just sort of watch. Not that I hope anybody gets arrested, but if they do, I want to get some video. Andrew on. and I just got back from uh, Toronto. We did a mounted patrol instructor school to get certified as mounted patrol instructors. And there was a lot of uh, talk and a lot of, I guess, uh, demoing of arresting from horseback. And there was a lot of different techniques that different agencies use. So we were able to see a lot of the different techniques and kind of see what's going to work for us. Because up there, they use Clydesdales. Okay. So and we don't down we here. We do not use Clydesdales currently here. Yeah. And I want to talk about that. Tell me about, tell me about these horses. Where do these horses come from? All of the horses that we have currently are donated to us. We have not bought one of these horses that we have currently of the 12. In the past, they have purchased horses. But right now, it's basically turned into a lot of people in the community either tell somebody else or let somebody else know that has a horse currently that maybe they're not using anymore, was used as a show horse, used as a pasture pony, whatever it may be, and their financial situation changed, their life has changed, they're no longer using the horse. So they will contact us and tell us they have a horse that they think would be a really good addition to the mounted unit. We'll go out, um, a couple of us will go out there, we'll have the person who owns the horse currently tack the horse up and ride the horse for us and see if its temperament is something that we would be looking for. And explain then, explain what mm -hmm. temperament is for people that aren't horse people. Temperament is attitude. So it can mean a lot of different things. It can mean how they respond to a lot of things that we're looking for. We use the horses, like Andrew was saying, we use the horses for everything. We use the horses for patrol. We use them for a search and rescue. We use the horses for programs with little kids, uh, special needs people. Um, a lot of times people will come up to us in wheelchairs. The horses need to be okay around basically any environment. And when we're looking at temperament, we're looking for potential also. We don't expect a horse that comes right from the pasture to be okay with police sirens, smoke, lights, screaming, things getting thrown at them and wheelchairs, strollers and little kids running through them and around them. Yeah. But we look for the potential. So if the horse is triggered by a lot of things that wouldn't usually bother one of our horses, we kind of look at that differently to see if he would work out or she. Once and once the horse is selected, they're not selected right away like she like Lindsay was saying. Mm -hmm. um, we go out, we do a site visit, look at the horse, um, talk to the original owner. Um, at that point in time, a contract's kind of drafted and through the sheriff's office and the owner, and they enter into a 90-day trial period. Okay. So we'll, we'll take the horse, bring him out to our facility, um, put him through a little bit more training, and see, okay, is this horse going to have the mindset and the capability to handle what we what we what we use the horses for is there a certain kind of horse though like you had mentioned the Clydesdales or Appaloosas or is there some, something that you normally take and don't take currently we don't have a specific breed but we are looking for horses that are a little bit larger in stature so we say 15 plus 16 plus hands and as Andrew was saying earlier that we measure that at the withers to the hoof so a lot of people that are in the horse world will know that we do like a, a bigger stature horse. Uh, the biggest horses we have right now, one of them is a warm blood and the other one is a thoroughbred and they're at 17 plus hands. Oh, wow. That's a big horse. Do, yeah, right. But we do have horses starting at 15 hands and up. So we do look for that. We look for darker colors too. We like them to be darker. We do have a couple horses that are, we have a couple paint horses that they tend to stand out more. So, and they're a lot harder to clean. <laughs> so so wait, like why, do, why do you want dark horses? Dark Those horses are, they hide uh, dirt a lot better. Plus, anyway, they look very uh, similar. So when we're out in the public, a lot of times um, the color schemes are the same. If we were to get into a situation where someone was going to 
we have a crowd control event or we have something, uh, we don't want them to single out a certain horse. All the horses we want to kind of look the same. So we have dark horses. We have we have bay horses, which are brown horses with black mane and tail. We have a dark bay, which is a darker brown with black mane and tail. And then we have black horses. We have some chestnuts. We have some, they're all the brown color schemes. Okay. <laughs> So t- tell me about you said search and rescue. You mentioned that. Yes. Tell me about that because, like you said, a lot of times it might be you might see the average person might see a horse at a at a, an event, maybe like you said, a football game or a soccer game or a parade or whatever. But talk about the ser- search and rescue. So with search and rescue, we have a ton of county parks, lakes, that sort of that sort of thing. So a lot of these missing people that we come across these phone calls that we get that you know a kid walked away or you know an elderly person left the house with a a mental illness or dementia or uh, other disability Um, we can go into areas of parks that it's going to be harder to get a patrol car in yeah and that you may not be able to get an ag unit uh, on a four-wheeler in yeah, if you think so, about Orange County, I mean, I've I've seen it from the air before. I mean, you you live in certain spots and you live in a neighborhood. And you're like, oh, there's it's it's so uh, urban here. But then when you really get out there, I mean, there's some pretty rural parts of Central Florida and or in Orange County in particular. And you're right, just getting a car sometimes to the edge of it can be hard. And then you got to go in and and even like four wheelers and those uh, gator things, like they can sometimes only get so far too. So I'm sure horses are really beneficial. Lindsay and I about a a couple months ago or so, went up to Wakava Springs up uh, near Apopka, and we went on a trail ride back in there, and we were gone for most of the day, and I looked, and we did a little over 10 miles. Wow. And we ran into two people while we were there. I imagine. So a lot of it, too, is you get some hikers, and if somebody has a medical illness or condition or an accident out while they're hiking... I mean, today the heat index I think is 102 outside. Yeah, you don't have to so be out long in the sun. If and it's Florida, you get a lot of visitors here. Yeah. So if you get somebody not used to the Florida climate, that decides, you know what, we're going to go out and you know go see some of the other parks, the community parks or state parks, not like the um, attractions, and want to get outside and go do something a little bit more active, and something happens to them. All right, the first thing they call is you know 911. But who's gonna who's gonna be able to get out there and respond to them? The road deputy in a in a in a Ford Explorer is gonna get stuck really quick. Yeah, yeah, and even so. on foot, I mean, you start walking, and and that's gonna take some time. You can you can cover a lot more ground, I'm sure, on a horse as well. Exactly, you can cover a lot more ground. You can walk a lot faster, and you can see a lot more. So, Lindsay, how long have you worked here? Over eight years. Yeah, in in the mounted unit. Right. Okay, and Andrew, how long? I'm um, just around seven years or so. So that's a long time. I mean, uh, over those you know eight, seven, eight years, are are there any cases or anything that really sticks out that you can talk about? We've done a lot of search and rescue. I, I say calls. So a lot of times the detectives will call us out if there's been a case they've been working for a few days and have not had any result. So we will come out and work with them for that and a lot of times we do train for it with um, the ag and marine units too so a lot of times we are a joint response when we come out the ag units will bring their atvs will bring the horses and then if there is a thick area or things that we can't get to then they'll try to bring the atvs and vice versa there have been a couple situations where our vantage point from the horses has gotten us able to find the subject of the search because we're higher, and even the helicopters couldn't see. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're way up there, right. so, and they got those cameras, but still. Right. Helicopter couldn't see the, that vantage point, but we could, just from the way that we were standing, could see, um, I believe there was a person in the water. And uh. Uh, from our vantage point, we could see that. And the deputy, the deputy, the deputies on the ground, and even the detectives. Detective. The, de- the detectives. Missing persons. Missing persons. Um the sergeant was the one who kind of located the individual, called them over, and said, hey, take a look, you know, about 20, 30 feet out. And they're standing on the ground saying, yeah, we don't, we don't see what you're talking about. But from where our, our being up a little bit higher and the way the wa- reflection from the sun hits the water, we can kind of see a little bit more as far as out from the shoreline. Okay, from somebody, wow. From somebody just walking the shoreline, the higher you are up, the closer you are helps, but the f- higher you are up, and the closer in, you can see a lot more. Yeah. 
a lot of times too, we generally try to stick to our same search patterns and we do stick to the same routine every time. So that has helped us out before too, with starting from a certain point that other people would think maybe to overlook, we have been able to locate a person that never left the scene. So oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of times too, it sounds basic, but there are times that you, if you just stick with what you know and stick with what you have trained for, you will find that just because people say that someone has not been there, they would, we found people still at the scene. Yeah. So, um, patrol, they always say, look for a person first, right? Where you, where, where you've started from and it could go overlooked. So there have been that too. And then we do evidence recovery as well. So when we do, well, sometimes we'll work with our emergency response team. If there is like a gun missing or, um, a piece of evidence from a crime, we will also go and assist and look for that too. So we train for that as well. When, when they call you out for people, does it usually turn out bad? I mean, are they usually deceased when you find them or, or is it 50 50 or? I mean, it's really up in the air for that. Like there, there have been times that we have not found people deceased. There have been times that we have, it just, it really depends on the time frame, the time of year and what the individual's specifications are. I guess we'll, we'll say what, what, what the circumstances are. Okay. Um, we, you know, a lot of times homicide will say, you know, someone's been missing for months. So oh, okay. well, yeah. we know at that point that we are not looking for a live person. We are looking for bones or a, a decomp situation, but it just depends. Have live people, I, I say live people, have you ever gone out looking for somebody and they spot you because you're on a horse? Or Yeah, All there right. has been. Um, but then a lot of times, too, we end up looking for people that have dementia or have um, a, a mental incapacity that when they see the police, they're afraid. So a lot of times they won't come to us. They will be afraid because they have been... I guess in their mind thinking that we're we're to run that you're going to run from us. Yeah. So in that say we have to kind of approach it differently. Like a lot of times we would call someone's name if we're looking for you or a child or something. But sometimes if you're dealing with a different mental illness or um, a physical incapacitation, a lot of those people won't respond. So we have to be looking for them. That's why we have to get their description and we have to get all kinds of different information about them. All right. So S oh, go ahead. Sometimes they may not see it as the deputy. Mm hmm. They see it as the horse. Right. So, yeah, they may be reluctant to go to somebody in a vehicle searching for them or somebody on ground dressed in uniform. They may be a little bit more hesitant to come to us, being that we still are in uniform on horseback. But sometimes that horse may overtake that uh, that emotion and just... Cause you, it's not every day you see a horse walking, That's walking down the street. <laughs> That's true. That's so, true. so one thing I noticed when I was out here doing a little tour before this podcast started was that the horses, their, their manes are shaved. Tell me about that. Explain why, why you do that here. Or cut, I should say. Yeah. Go ahead if you want to take it. It's kind of three, three main reasons. Nah, um, I like that. Main reasons. So <laughs> one being um, uniformity. So I guess Lindsay touched on earlier. Most may even be the most photographed unit. Oh, they don't want, they don't, they don't want I wonder if the Marine unit would, would uh, say that too, or the well, helicopter. I mean, but I'm sure you're right. They're probably, you guys are probably the I'm most. I'm pretty sure they're not taking pictures of the boats <laughs> or the deputies out there. You know, they, as much as they don't want a picture of me or Lindsay, they want a picture of the horse. That's, That's right. not true. Let's, they do. <laughs> let's be honest about it, right? So, one for pictures. Some horses naturally their manes gr uh, part down the center. So for pictures, it's a little bit cleaner. If they're shaved, it gives the image that the effect of the mane's just on the other side. Okay. Um, two for crowd control again. That's a lot less for somebody to grab onto. Yeah. So. And that's an interesting point. You think about it, if something were to get, uh, you know, somebody were to get a little unruly and they reach for the horse, they can't grab the mane. Right. Because yeah, there's nothing exactly. There's nothing there. And that's so. That's the main reason. That's that's the number one reason why really. Um, but for like i said for photographs and two it's kind of a ceremonial ceremony for us as far as once the horse is accepted in the unit ah we know if the horse so you can walk through our barn and kind of know for a little bit of insight that not everybody gets um that you can see what kind of horses are still on trial yeah it's like still, it's like in. going into boot camp like yes. they just shave exactly. your head and exactly. you're in exactly you're in when yep. you're shaved yes. but once it, they're shaved you're in i think i heard the third reason has to do with they're a little cooler too 
Yes, they can. They can be a little bit cooler. All right, <laughs> maybe. I mean, maybe not. I don't. I mean, it's hot in Florida, no matter yes. what your hair looks like. I exactly, guess. it's hot either way. <laughs> You're gonna sweat no matter what. So yes. let's say, let's say I am out. I'm at a at an event. I'm at one of these big games where there's some horses out there. How how should I interact with the horse? I'm not. Let's say I'm not inebriated. I'm not drunk. I'm generally, just want to come up and say hi. Generally, we don't have one problem with you coming up and saying hi to us. A lot of times, we just ask that you ask if you can pet the horse because. People want to just shove their hand right in the horse's mouth. <laughs> and some of the horses will think that that is a treat for them. So, And they have teeth. So a lot of times, just for your own safety, come up and ask us, hey, can I pet your horse? And we have no problem with that. Pictures, petting, all of that. It's uh, don't shove your ho- your hand in my horse's mouth, please. That's, <laughs> That's going to be the, <laughs> the name of this podcast. Don't shove your don't hand, shove your in, hand in my horse's mouth. mouth. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all about safety. Right. We got... Any one of our riders out here has got no problems with, you know, any any citizen coming up and petting the horse. Exactly. And we'll talk we'll talk to you as long as as long as you like. Um, but for us, it's just it's it's safety at do the end have, of the day. Do there's, you have there's, to a, there's a safe spot to pet the horse and a not so safe area. Yes. The oh, where's mouth, the, the wait, where's mouth. the safe spot? I where's, would just like to add one, one thing also. If you <laughs> see us currently involved in an altercation or involved with a situation that you would not want to involve yourself in, please do not come up and ask us to pet the horse at this time. Okay, yes. Give be us patient. a minute, please. Yeah, be patient. Give let, us a minute, please. Let them do their jobs yes. on the as horse. As soon as we are done doing our jobs, you can pet my horse, but my horse has a job to do currently and please don't <laughs> ask to pet them at that moment. Very, and I'm done with that right now. Very good public safety announcement. <laughs> public safety <laughs> announcement, please. If somebody did want to pet the horse and you guys said it was okay is there where should they pet it at generally the horses get pet so much on the face that they get really tired of it so we say the largest part is their neck to their shoulder um it's the softest part and that's where you get the most pets in at the shoulder to the neck area okay shoulder to neck yep pet around there that's right. where they like it if it's right. okay if you say it's okay exactly if we say it's okay um a lot of times we don't let the horses eat anything that you bring to them either. So no treats from your pocket. No yeah, French they don't fries. Want your hot dogs. We don't want they your don't hot dogs. No chips. None of um, that. We have treats for them. We carry uh, food and hay with them everywhere we go in their horse trailers along with um, fans and things. So they are pampered ponies. <laughs> we don't need your starburst. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Like, like we talked about, there's crowd control, there's search and rescue. So, like, what do you do on days when there's not a big event and we're not looking for somebody out in the wilderness? What's, like, a normal day around here at the barn? We do normal patrol just like any, just like any other unit as well. Um, proactive patrol. So are some of our high crime areas. If we've been getting hit harder in a different certain area with daytime burglaries or, um, you know, package thieves. So, wait, we'll like, go, we'll uh, on a in. horse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll go in. We'll go into neighborhoods, and if we can identify a crime trend um, and time of day that we're out and stuff that we're going to be beneficial, we'll start hitting neighborhoods. And it can be as simple as just whoever's in the area and they're doing that stuff. If they see our trailer and they see us on horses, yeah, they move you know, away. They move away. They're not. They're not going to do what they're going to do today. So you just like you know, walk down the street on on the yeah. horse, mm-hmm. really. Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, we That's awesome. I, don't, I, I mean, I live, I actually do live in Orange County. I don't live in the city of Orlando, but I'm in like a little tiny sort of alcove. And so mm-hmm. I've never seen a horse in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe I live in a, in a neighborhood where I don't need it, thankfully. But uh, but that'd be awesome to see a horse walking down the street. We try to spread the love evenly. Uh, <laughs> there's just, like I said, there's only five of us in the unit full time assigned. So a lot of times we will pick an area to patrol. A lot of times we'll look at the mapping system and we'll see where things are happening happening and we'll go there if we have our captain asks us to do something in a certain location we will go over there too and uh patrol where they ask us to patrol nice so do you carry anything special besides treats are there is there different equipment for a mounted unit uh patrol person we carry a little shovel <laughs> to make I, sure that I we think about that. clean up after our horses. Okay, so if you don't know, horses uh, poo sometimes. Yes. And then, so you guys have to clean it up we afterwards. Do. We you don't do. Ha- you don't have a clown following you behind we you. We unfortunately do not, and we are the clowns, <laughs> basically. Uh, we generally like, we understand that the public is not used to horses, and so if you like to see a lot of um, 
yard dumplings on the side of the road. <laughs> a lot of times, if, if they're in an area that people are walking, we definitely make sure that we get that out of the way. For Where you. do you put it? We find a garbage can. We sometimes bring little bags with us that we'll throw big away bags. later. <laughs> big bags. We do. Um, we actually do have for other events and different things. We do have. Uh, they're called bun bags. They do attach to the saddle. So if there is a situation or a, a crowd control or a special event that we're working that we can't get off the horses, we do have bun bags that bun the bags. horses um, use for that situation. And then when we get breaks, we will take the bags off and we will um, empty them out and then use them again. So uh, I, I know a lot of people are horse people. They love working with horses and they love seeing them. Is there a way for Orange County residents to come out here and maybe volunteer or can they help in any way? The sheriff's office through um, OCSO.com, I believe it's still on the left-hand side, um, has a tab that you can go on there and through human resources apply for volunteer okay to volunteer um, we do take volunteers um, we've got a few we've had we've had a few that come out pretty steadily um, but we're always we're always kind of welcome to additional help excellent well Lindsay Andrew thank you so much for chatting with me I feel like I learned so much about the mounted unit and uh, we'll keep updating everybody look at our facebook and instagram and twitter when you guys make this move to the other side of the county we'll make sure we get some video yes, and photos please, up there come out and see us and uh but thank you guys so much and uh, we'll see you guys next week thank you thank you thanks for listening don't forget to subscribe to behind the star you can find us wherever you get your favorite podcasts also follow us on twitter instagram facebook and youtube until next time, I'm John Bustecker, and this is Behind the Star. Bye.